and we're charging at 140 amps. See? You do not need an Onan. Welcome to the channel and thanks for joining us today. We're going to be reviewing the latest installation that we have done of a solar and battery installation. But before we start directly going into that, we're going to be reviewing why we do that. So the first question to ask is, do you want to install a permanent RV generator in your RV? And the answer is resounding no, no way. You may wonder why. I mean, it's there. Why not? Well, it's simple. First, the cost. Six grand is the cheapest, a 4,000 watt generator to put it in with the wire and all the exhaust and everything, uh, plus a transfer switch and an outlet. You're looking into six grand minimum. Now, if you want a really nice diesel for a bigger motorhome, three AC units, 10,000 kilowatt, ten, yeah, you're looking at 10 kil kilowatt unit, 20 grand. So, a lot of money. Now, to run it, if the gas is expensive, you're looking into one gallon per hour, uh, plus a few little more, maybe seven bucks an hour to 18 bucks an hour if you're running one of the big diesel generators. Then yearly maintenance, 30 to 35 bucks an hour for the small gas generators. And as soon as you start going into the 5,500 to 7,000 watts, you're looking into 80 because you got filters. Once you go into the big diesels, you're looking into air filters. You're, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, it's air filters, fuel filters. Uh, you're looking into oil filters. Then you're looking into oil. And you're looking into, if you do it yourself, over 100 bucks. If you have somebody do it for you, 300 bucks. That's a lot of money. Also, repairs. And this one is one of the big problems of the installed RV generators. Fixing an RV generator when it's in the RV, it's a problem because there is very few places that actually want to do that. It is difficult to do, it's difficult to work on, and not all RVs, you can actually slide the generator out of the RV area you got to work with the rv generator inside of the rv or you have to take it out which in a lot of times it will take you two to three hours to take out on a good day so no it's not easy every time you're going to go and take your generator to be repaired i had a small fleet of 10 units of rentals never have i paid less than 500 bucks for any repairs or any of the generators and when you're talking about having a repair done normally the bills were a thousand bucks and when you're talking about diesel generators oh you can easily go into the thousands so that's a lot of money now rv generators that cost between 6k and 20,000, yeah that's a lot of money and here's the problem with that you buy the generator, you install it. How big do you need the generator? Well, let's say that you have two air conditioners, 50,000 BTU. Uh, well, each one of them will run at 15 amp, uh, 1400 watts each, 2800 watts total. But the surge load, it's 3000 watts each, 6000 watts total. That means that your generator needs to run at least 7000 watts to be able to take that search load otherwise you're dead in the water that means that while your generator is running for the first five seconds that your ACs run or every time the compressor runs you're going to use the full power of the generator the rest of the time your generator is going to be running at 20 or 30 percent capacity but these are constant speed generators that means that they're going to keep running at the same speed that means that a bigger generator is going to consume more fuel. No matter what you do, it's still going to consume more fuel. Does it consume the same fuel at full throttle, at full load, at half load? No, it does not. 
but it's still consuming a lot of fuel. It's not like an inverter generator that consumes much less fuel when it's not being used, when it's not using a lot of power. Now, what is the solution to this problem? Well, first, try to change the system to something a little bit more efficient. In this case, a solar battery inverter. You put solar on the roof, you buy a small inverter generator, you feed that plus the grip power into an inverter, low frequency inverter in my case, that's what I normally choose for, and uh, a battery, LFP normally works really good, and with that, you're able to power your air conditioners, you're able to power pretty much everything in your coach. A 6,000 watt split phase low frequency inverter, uh, you can get one of those for under a grand, you can get a really nice one with a lot of features for 1300 bucks. It will be able to power two ACs, it will be able to power three ACs, and it will handle the surge loads with no problems. In the meantime, you can use the 3000 watt generator to charge the batteries and allow the inverter to handle the ups and downs of power, and you don't have to worry about that. In the meantime, also, it will automatically use the power from the sun, the power from the generator, the power from the grid if you want. You can program, you can figure which one takes priority. You can do all of that and minimize your power consumption. And beyond that, you're dealing with a much simpler problem when you get to the generator part. Now, why do you want to go into this? First, the batteries and the inverter require no maintenance. I have my system in my motorhome for four years. No maintenance whatsoever. Uh, the only thing I do is every so often, once every six months, I go and I check the air vents of the inverter to see that they're clean. That's it. The batteries need no service. And I use Second Life batteries from Automotive. So these are used batteries from a Nissan Leaf and used batteries from a Chevy Volt. And in both cases, the batteries are going to outlast the motorhome for sure. Also, the generator that I'm using in this case is portable. And it's less than 100 than 1,000. Uh, you can get an extended warranty and uh, simply exchange it if it fails. And in my case, I have a generator from Harbor Freight for less than 1,000 bucks, 3,500 uh, 3, watts. And I extend the warranty for three years, I remember correctly. And uh, if it breaks or it does, I don't have a problem, it doesn't run well, I just go to Harbor Freight, give them that one, they give me a brand new one, I pay for the extended warranty again, I'm good to go. I don't have to deal with repairs, I don't have to deal with anything. And, oh, by the way, uh, you can drop generator in a repair shop if not. Let's say that you decide not to buy the extended warranty and you want somebody to fix it. You can drop it in the repair shop and you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to take the RV to the repair shop, which is the biggest problem also if you have a permanently mounted RV generator that your RV needs to stay with your generator at the shop. If the shop has the generator for a week, you're they have your RV for a week. Uh, you can charge from any power source, limiting your power intake. So you can charge from a 110 outlet. So if you're going to visit family and friends, you can mooch dock, as they call it. Basically, just plug in from an outlet on their outside and uh, get as much power as you can out of that outlet without overpowering the outlet and tripping the breaker or anything like that. Or you can plug into a 30 amp in a campground and not having to worry about how many things you're going to power on on your RV because you're running out of the batteries and the 30 amp shoreline is, is using all of its power at a standard level without overloading the breaker, charging your batteries. In the meantime, your inverter is handling all the ups and downs of your power. The system will combine the solar power, grid, and generator power all automatically without having to deal with any of the variances directly on the intake of the power. It makes a much more cleaner power and much more efficient way to use it. So, with that, 
why don't we review the system that we already have in place. We started installing 14200 watt solar panels on the roof with custom made brackets. They're actually pretty close to the roof. All the wire is in a serial sequence all routed into an MP3T charger. Then we also installed a 30 amp plug in the front of the fifth wheel all the way that we could plug it into a 30 amp or a 15 amp cable. Also there's still the 50 amp cable. Now the 30 amp cable that we have in there comes into a four plug inlet inside of the area where we have the batteries in which we have two 15 amp chargers so we could actually plug in the 30 amp and let the batteries charge directly from the 30 amp. Here you can see also the shunt that we use to measure power is also connected via Bluetooth. Here you have the thermostat that we use to control the fans that would actually use power and temperature to control the airflow coming from the inside air conditioning to cool down the area around the batteries. Now this is the battery storage rack. We actually built this rack with three quarter inch plywood. And actually I didn't build it, the owner of the fifth wheel did, but he did a great job with that. Uh, it contains six 5.12 kilowatt LiFo power EG4 batteries. These batteries are great. They deliver five kilowatts each, and this gives enough power to run the fifth wheel with two air conditioners at least for a good day. If you're not running the air conditioners, it can run for several days with absolutely no problems. Now, this is the way it looks from the outside. You look at on the side of the battery compartment and this is where the inverter is mounted and those are all the plugs. Now this is as soon as we finish installation there was a little bit more cleanup that we did. Now here you can see those are the two main cables coming from the line and going into the trailer that, that's the breaker for solar. Uh, those are the fans to cool down the cabinet. Uh, that is the control, the fan control speed the power to switch off the batteries and those two breakers underneath the inverter are the in and out breaker lines for the inverter the 50 amps now see these two yellow plugs those plugs are the wire coming from the post and the wire going into the fifth wheel the reason why we put those plugs is that if anything goes on you just unplug those um, and you plug them in between them and you bypass the entire system. This is the fan that actually sucks air from that environment to outside. That means that it's going to suck air from there and it's also going to be feeding air from the inside, which is air conditioned air. Those are the 50 amp breakers that we have put into the two live wires into the 50 amp lines and that is the on off switch for the batteries. Oh, that is the speed control for the fans. It's a three axial fan that would allow you to not only exhaust but to move air. This is the internet access to the controller of the batteries, uh, the inverter, and it allows you to see how much solar power you're using. You got a 2800 watt maximum capacity. But this is the shunt Bluetooth connection, and this is pretty much the most useful part because as you see here it tells you the green that you're charging how much you're charging in this case it's 140 amps of charging 140 amp is a lot of power and this is the way to control the system once you are inside of the motorhome without using your phone that is in a nutshell pretty much everything all the details in the system now why is it so good first you can run the system connected to any type of power you want. Uh, if you only have 110, you can use 110. If you only have 15 amp or 30 amp, you use that. If you have actually a 50 amp connection, you can use that. If you have a small generator, you use that. If you have a bigger generator, you can use that. You can use any type of power and you can configure the system to be able to charge with that type of power with no problems. You can monitor the system remotely via the internet or you can remotely connect it via Bluetooth. Or you can actually control the system from inside of the fifth wheel. And also, the battery capacity of 30 kilowatts is enough 
for you to be able to plan a couple of days ahead of what you're going to be doing. 30 kilowatts is easily enough to be able to run a few days without having any power whatsoever because you can run both ACs full throttle in Florida for a couple of days with 30 kilowatts, even 15,000 un 15, BTU units. Uh, the system runs really good. Everything is mounted on top of the rails of the chassis, so the weight of the batteries is properly supported and is all well within the CC, uh, the carrying cargo capacity, the CCC of the unit. Uh, the system works flawlessly, it doesn't have any issues. It's just getting used to what you can and cannot do with the electrical power if you want to keep the power running for longer or not. With that, thank you very much. Have a good one. See you in the next video.